Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have a box. Something very exciting. Let's open the box and have a look inside. So inside the first box was the second box from O1. And I don't know how well you can see there. It is the Digital Storage Oscilloscope XDS2102A. This is hot off the presses. I was talking to a guy at O1 about a month ago, and he said, we've got a new oscilloscope coming out. Do you want to take a look at it? And I said, sure, I'd love to take a look at it. He said, well, you're going to have to wait a couple weeks because we are just now finishing up the firmware. So apparently the firmware has been finished because they shipped this um, Sunday. Or I guess that'd be Monday, uh, China time, China date. And it arrived here on Thursday for, via DHL. So very quick shipping. And inside the second box, you're not going to believe it is a third box and O1 if you're not familiar with them is actually Fuji and Lilliput Opto Electronics Company Limited oh, okay it's not a third box there is a box there but that's just some goodies what we've got here is the scope so let's reposition and have a better look all right now this is one pretty oscilloscope Again, this is the O1 XDS 2102A. It is a 12-bit scope. Most of the scopes that you see um, from the other lower-end manufacturers, we'll call them your basic consumer manufacturers, uh, they're 8-bit scopes. This is a 12-bit scope. 100 megahertz bandwidth, 1 gig a sample per second, and an 8-inch diagonal screen. We're going to compare this with my other scope so that you can see just the difference in size. So in here, we get a standard American power cord. And this cord is, uh, it feels pretty nice, almost feels like silicone. Uh, what do we got here? This is 105C 300 volt FT1 Shangyu Jintao. Yeah, that's a, that is a nice cord. We get a USB-A to USB-B connector. We get the software and the manual. And this scope is compatible, pardon me, with LabVIEW and other applications. This is a very sophisticated scope. We have our quick guide. We've got our probes. Um, they are not auto sensing, I don't think. I don't know, maybe they are. I'll have to read. Could be. But they are 100 megahertz uh, probes. Yeah. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So I'm going to get this thing set up and we're going to have a nice look at it. All right, I apologize for the strange camera angles here for this part, but I'm, I want to try and show you guys just the size difference in the screens. So you're familiar with my old scope. It is uh, about 17 centimeters diagonal, and this O1 is, well, it looks to be about 20 and a half diagonal so we're looking at a considerably larger screen there but here's what something that is really cool if I turn both of these scopes edge on look at the difference in thickness between the two of them the O1 at its thickest which is probably down here by the feet is about seven and a half centimeters and my old scope is about 13 centimeters, so it's almost twice as thick. Uh, Height-wise, the O1 is a little bit higher, of course, because it has the larger screen. That's to be expected. Let's talk about this beautiful scope. 
This is not going to be a full featured review. I just got it, so I don't know all the features of it yet. We're just going to talk about uh, the key features that make this such a nice scope. And again, I just want to apologize to everybody who's always complaining about my breath sounds. You know, we're in oxygen 24 hours a day, so sorry about that. All right, we have a nice soft switch here. So let's turn it on. Apparently I didn't hold it long enough. There we go. Got to hold it about a second. Boots up. See all their nice products there. Once it's booted, we'll talk some more. So, like I mentioned, this is a 12-bit scope. Most of your other you know, entry-level consumer scopes are 8-bit scopes. So, this one has, what, 8-bit to 12-bit, 16 times the resolution? I think that's right. We've got a 20 meg record length, 55,000 waveforms per second refresh rate. Low background noise with a vertical sensitivity of one millivolt per division. Multi-triggers, including bus decoding. We're going to talk about that in the review. It is SCPI and LabVIEW supported. We talked about the thin body. It has multiple interfaces, USB host, USB device, USB port for PickBridge, LAN, AUX. It's got a VGA port, which if you're a teacher, that VGA port is everything. You can put this up on a big screen and show everyone your screen. That's just awesome. And of course, we got the big screen. Like we said, this is considerably larger. Uh, the bandwidth is 100 megahertz sample rate, 1 giga sample per second at 8 bits, 500 mega samples per second at 12 bits. Uh, horizontal scale, 2 nanoseconds per division. Rise time typical is about 3.5 nanoseconds. So we've got some serious computing power here, including if we bring up our math menu, you can see we have dual waveform math, fast Fourier transform, user functions, just incredible stuff that we can do here. Yeah, I mean, just amazing stuff. Let's hook it up to the function generator and just take a look at some of the waveforms. Okay, so here's a 10 kilohertz sine wave, 10 volts, peak to peak. You can see we got our frequency counter there. We got our channel one, our divisions. Everything's beautiful. Check this out. If we press the snapshot button, it gives us all this information, period, mean, RMS, minimum <clears throat> base voltage, our overshoot, our rise time, which in this case is 30 microseconds, our pulse width duty cycle, delay cycle RMS, screen duty, pulse count, rising edge area. It's calculating the area under a curve. Hot damn. That almost killed me in my first calculus class. Frequency, peak to peak. I mean, just more things than you can shake a stick at there. Let's uh, change waveforms, go to a square wave. Now there's a little overshoot there, and that's because we're using a BNC to BNC connector. It's not compensated. There's a triangle wave. There's a uh, positive going ramp, negative going ramp. One of my favorites, the, uh, the stair step triangle wave. If you can create that out of discrete components, I'll buy you a nice bottle of Jameson's. How's that? Anyway, so it does just a beautiful job of displaying the waveforms. And what's really nice, let's go in here to our amplitude. Take it down. We're now at one volt peak to peak. I'll adjust our trigger here a little bit. There we go. Let's take it down even more. Let's go. There's 900 millivolts peak to peak. And that is a nice smooth wave. 800 millivolts, seven, six. There's 40 millivolts peak to peak. That's holding it really nice. 
30 millivolts. Twenty millivolts peak to peak. How about that? That's where we're getting into the beauty of that twelve bit resolution. You can really get in to some of these low voltage waveforms. A really nice feature here in the cursor menu is that we can do both our voltage and our time at the same time. So if we start out with adjusting our time, we'll adjust our A value, that would be our start value, and then B, which is our stop value. If you look at that now, you can see we have our peaks in the voltage area, our time, we can get uh, delta Y and delta X. This will allow us to measure capacitors, inductors, and this is a function that a lot of your lower end, like what I call consumer scopes, just don't have. My old scope, you guys remember that, it didn't have that function. You could only do one or the other. You couldn't do them both at the same time. And that's really, like I said, that's just a super nice feature. Um, if we come up here to our measure screen, you see we can add or remove anything we want. There's our channel one measurements. And if we want to add one, let's see off of channel one, we can go up here and add what we got here. For instance, there's area. So now we can bring it on. We're going to go to short channel one. There we go. Those are just really nice features. We also have that memory depth. Now let's see if I can figure out where it would be. In acquire? Yeah. Our length from a uh, 1K up to 20 megs. I mean, that's just, uh, that's huge. You can see our sample size window up there, how that changes when we adjust that. So that's that's really nice. Our performance mode, 8-bit, 12-bit. We can even change our interpolation between sine X and just X. And believe me, folks, there is a difference between the two when you're looking at the smoothness of the wave. Smoothness, I'm not sure that's a proper term, but it you know, works for me. Now, we also have that pass-fail. There's the pass-fail button. What we can do, and we're going to do this in the review, is we can set up a waveform that meets our criteria and then put other waveforms compared to it, and it'll give us a pass-fail signal, which is great in a uh, production environment. We have a uh, counter. You know, just all kinds of excellent stuff. We have the print button. All you have to do is hit print, and it'll send that waveform out to a USB stick. We also have the waveform record, where we can bring up and record this type record. We can record the wave, the image, whatever we want. Then we can also record it, play it back. We can store it. We can send it off to somebody. These are definitely professional features that you're finding like this, but where you're going to find a lot of the cool features here are in our trigger menus. So if we could bring up the trigger menu, you see we can trigger on edge, video, pulse, slope, runt. I mean, that's something I've only seen in the higher end Tektronics. Uh, Windows, timeout, nth edge. We can bring up our alternate trigger. We can trigger on logic. You see here we have logic modes, and, or, X, nor. Incredible. Uh, type. And then we have our bus decoding for RS-232, I2C, and SPI. I mean, this is just amazing how much stuff they've packed into this. And the price on this, I believe, is going to be between $400 and $500. So it's for sure an affordable scope and it's definitely a step up just 
really cool. So I can't wait to play with this for a week or so, and then we'll come back with a full-on review. I hope you guys enjoyed this exclusive preview. This is just hot off of the factory floor. Like I said, they shipped this Sunday. I got it today, which is Thursday. Brand new. Thanks, Owen, for including us. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys for watching, sticking around, commenting. Big thanks, guys. So don't forget to comment. Let me know what you think of this. That's it. I am out of here. Peace.